United States House of Representatives passed H.R. 1, the H.R. 1 Act. It is addressing election integrity, which is funny because I thought that we didn't have any election integrity problems. I thought that this was all settled. We had the most secure election in the history of the world, didn't we? No fraud. Everything was baseless. No evidence anywhere. No court of law found anything wrong happened. Everything. Perfect. Perfect. Anybody who questions it, in fact, is an insurrectionist and somebody who probably should be thrown right out of America. And so it's a little bit surprising to me that Congress is focused on passing new election laws. That's weird because they thought it was pretty much perfect last time. Election wizard over on Twitter said, breaking, the U.S. House passes H.R. 1 by a vote of 220 to 210. So split right along party lines. It now heads to the Senate. The bill federalizes the election process while gutting voter ID, mandating no-fault absentee ballots, and banning witness signature and notarization requirements for absentee ballots. That's according to the election wizard over on Twitter. What does Joe Biden have to say about it? He's pretty happy. He says the right to vote is sacred and fundamental, and H.R. 1 is urgently needed to protect that right, to safeguard the integrity of our elections, and to repair and strengthen our democracy. I look forward to signing it into law after it has passed through the legislative process, which again, strange. I thought our elections were full of integrity. I thought there was nothing we needed to do about them. I don't know why it needs to be urgent. I thought our democracy was, was perfect because our elections were so perfect. And this would be very curious. There's going to be a lot of constitutional issues that come up from this. Remember, we've spent a lot of time talking about election litigation here and how the legislature of the states runs the elections. Now the federal government wants to take that up? All right. Well, Breitbart did a very nice job of summarizing what's in this bill. Joel Polak over on Twitter said, HR1 is a license to steal elections. Just some provisions. So... He's saying this in the future. We're not talking about the 2020 election. We're not talking about the 2021 election. We're talking about future elections. Okay, YouTube? Thank you. We have unlimited ballot harvesting, he says is in this bill. Registration of minors. We have restricting photo IDs. We have federal control of district maps. Gift cards for political donations. We'll see what that's all about. And accepting a ballot 10 days after the election. So we already saw kind of a lot of this stuff. We saw that North Carolina in 2020, they accepted ballots, I think, nine days afterwards. So we already got that one going. Uh, saw some other videos of uh, Native American tribes getting, you know, gift cards and stuff for voting. Saw that last election. Uh, federal control of district maps. So redistricting, you know, that's a huge issue every year. Uh, photo identification. Saw a lot of that. Spent a lot of time talking about voter enfranchisement versus, uh, you know, voter fraud versus, versus voter integrity and those types of issues. Registration of minors. So people under 18 apparently are going to be able to vote and or, or at least register and also unlimited ballot harvesting. So they can just go pick up ballots wherever they want. So let's break this down. We've got some uh, stories here from heritage.org. They did a little bit of analysis. Key takeaways from the For the People Act. HR1 would federalize and micromanage the election process, imposing unnecessary, unwise, unconstitutional mandates on the states. That's key takeaway one. Number two, it would reverse the decentralization of the American election process, an essential protection of our liberty and freedom. So decentralization is a big concept. And number three, they would implement nationwide the worst changes in election rules that occurred in 2020 and further damage or eliminate basic security protocols. Here is what the bill looks like. H.R. 1 for the People Act of 2021, sponsored by Rep. Sarbanes. From, he's a Democrat from, looks like, Maryland, introduced on January 4th. One of the first bills, obviously, H.R. 1, that was introduced into the House on the House Administration Committee, Intelligence, Judiciary, Oversight, Homeland Security, all of them. It's on all the committees. Roll call, eight roll call votes. And as you can see here, it passed the House of Representatives. So now it is going over to the Senate. This is what it looks like. Here is H.R. 1 in the 117th Congress first session. The goal here is to expand access to the ballot box, reduce influence of big money in politics, strengthen ethics, rules for public servants, implement other corruption measures for the purpose of fortifying our democracy and for other purposes. Short title, For the People Act of 2021. Here are 37 things to know about H.R. 1 for the people. We are not going to read all 37 items, but there's a lot that you need to know. Again, this comes over from Breitbart.com. They passed the so-called For the People Act, radically change American democracy, nationalizing elections, making permanent changes to voting rules that would virtually ensure Democrats never lose another election. Well, that's the point. They've got the House. They've got the Senate. They've got the White House. 
Buckle up. The bill is 791 pages long, massive piece of legislation adopted with little examination or debate, as is the case. 791 pages. So they went through it. I, of course, did not go through it. Like expanding access for voters with disabilities, improving election security, ensuring that all voting machines in the U.S. are also manufactured in the U.S. Those are uncontroversial but others are potentially explosive. Let's look around. Federal control over congressional elections. Congress finds that they have broad re authority to regulate the time, place, and manner. The Constitution, though, gives primary authority to the states, as we've talked about, but it allows Congress to make or alter such regulations. The House Democrats interpret this provision as dramatically as possible to override the states. Interesting. Declaring that states and localities have eroded access to the right to vote. So remember we talked about this sort of on this spectrum. Oh gosh, I could talk about this segment for probably seven hours. I'm not going to do that. But we did talk about the spectrum. Basically, everybody who says that if you put any roadblocks in front of voting, if you say you need to show an ID or you got to vote in person, we're not going to do this mail-in ballot garbage anymore, right? Show up to vote. We want to check you, make sure you are who you are. And then you get to cast your ballot. Well, that is a huge problem for the Democrats because they call that uh, voter suppression. If you try to enforce anything that supports what Republicans or what conservatives call voter integrity by checking signatures, by making sure people who are they say they are, by, by you know forcing registration, by collecting ballots when they're due, those are all categorized by the left as voter suppression tactics. Okay. So part two of their bill, they're saying no more voter integrity provisions because that is precluding access that is harming the right to vote. Restricting challenges to HR1 in the federal court system. So the bill declares that only courts with jurisdiction to hear challenges to its constitutionally are courts within Washington, D.C., so they are trying to modify the court. So if you have a problem with this bill, you can only come into their playground to challenge it. Automatic online and voter registration, protection for illegal aliens who are registered to vote, changing personal information at polling places, so voters are allowed to change their address and other information, and then cast regular, not provisional ballots. Same-day voter registration, so everybody can just come on in, vote right away. Preventing states from purging ineligible voter rolls from the rolls. I don't know why that would be restricts third parties from challenging voters eligibility unless they have personal knowledge of in ineligibility. So it raises the standards way high. We saw this also taking place uh, in the Warnock and Ossoff campaigns. Registration for minors under 18 automatically registered, prohibiting the publication of misleading information. What is that? The bill makes it a federal crime to communicate or cause to be communicated information that is knowingly false about an election designed to discourage voting within 60 days of an election. The sentence up to five years makes it a crime to claim a false political endorsement. So do you know what this means? Remember we talked about that illegal meme? Somebody was picked up by the Biden DOJ for posting a meme in 2016 saying, uh, just text your vote to support Hillary. Remember that? That person got picked up years later, charged with federal crimes of some obscure statute. I can't remember even what it was. Never seen it in that context before. But be in charge with that. This would now make it a formal federal crime. If you post a meme that is saying, hey, just text your vote. No, it's a joke. It's a troll. They were trolling people. That will be a crime punishable by five years. Reducing prison funds to states unless they register ex-convicts to vote. So it's just a voter registration drive for them. Uh, mandatory early voting. So everybody everywhere has to have early voting nationwide vote by mail without photo ID. Why would you want to have photo ID? If you have photo ID, then well, you can, uh, you, you can't, you can't falsify a bunch of mail in ballots, unlimited ballot, ballot harvesting, allowing 10 days for ballots to be accepted after the election day paying for postage for mailed ballots so they can just send them right in, prohibiting state election officials from campaigning in federal elections, creating a campus vote coordinator at colleges and universities. <laughs> they just want they just want they want federal funds and federal government funding for just to create their own little ballot harvesters at colleges and universities. How do you think people at in universities and colleges, how do you think they vote? Conservative or liberal? Do you think they support Republicans more or Democrats more? 
Anybody want to take a guess? I think we all know what the answer there is. Gutting photo ID requirements. The bill states that a substitute photo ID would, would allow voters to vote. Making absentee ballots available for 45 days. So you can just vote 45 days after the election. Mandatory curbside voting. So sort of uh, like going to McDonald's, you just drive through and just drop your vote off. Restoring federal supervision of the state's under Voting Rights Act. We've got encouraging statehood for D.C., and representation for territories, federal control of the congressional district maps through, quote, independent commissions. Yeah, right. National Commission to Protect United States Democratic Institutions. So they're going to study more elections. I love the commissions. Love more commissions. Everybody, Republicans, Democrats, they all want more commissions. Just commission everything. We've got a lot to study these days, apparently. New reporting requirements for companies. Candidates required to report foreign contacts. We're going to talk about Eric Swalwell next. That would be a good one. We have new disclosure for corporations. We've got oversight of online political advertising. Yeah, they got blown out by Trump in 2016 because of the online stuff. So they're going to want to curtail that. So that doesn't happen again. They want a deportation for aliens who violate election laws. Well, they're using the term alien, which is concerning because they outlawed that in other contexts. Removing restrictions on IRS targeting. The bill appears to reverse provisions that restrain the IRS from targeting tax-exempt organizations. We've got attacking Citizens United on free speech for corporations, gift cards and reimbursements for political donations. They're calling it My Voice. This bill creates a federally funded voucher program that gives individuals $25 to donate to the candidates of their choice. So they're giving people money to donate to candidates. It also provides for federal matching funds of 600% of the amount candidates for federal office receive in small dollar donations. Oh my God. All right. Allowing politicians to use campaign funds for personal use. (laughs) Oh my. Oh to use campaign funds for personal use under a provision called Help America Run Act. The bill legalizes what had previously been considered a violation of federal law, allows candidates for federal office to use campaign donations for personal expenses, such as child care, as long as they do not already hold federal office. Oh my goodness. All right, we're almost done. Changing the composition of the FEC to become partisan. The bill reduces the membership in the Federal Election Committee from six to five members. Only two members can be associated with a particular political party. Changing conflict of interest rules to bar Donald Trump from running again. Though Trump is not mentioned, the bill tightens rules around conflicts of interest for the president and the vice president that would make it hard for Trump to run again. It requires the the president or the vice president divest all financial interests that could pose a conflict of interest for them, their families, or anyone with whom they are negotiating or who is seeking employment in their administration, and then changing the FEC rules to require Trump or other presidential candidates to provide for their tax returns. Wow. That's the first time I've read a summary of that. I'm like shocked that this is even a thing. Oh my goodness. Let's jump into some questions. We got some good questions. We've got I onion over at locals.com slash watching the watchers. If you want to ask a question says Robert, that HR one bill is a nightmare of permanent globalist control. The irony is that combined with the time magazine article, in my opinion, it's prima facie evidence of the EF thoughts. Um, this is this is a rotten bill. I, I, we're going to have to spend more time on this bill on a later show. I don't know what the Senate's going to do about this. I didn't realize how reprehensible this entire bill was. I think that it is facially unconstitutional. I do not think that this is uh, something that stands. I think the Supreme Court will wreck this bill just based on what I've read and based on all of the other election litigation that we have covered. Liberty or deaths in the house says the HR one bill violates the constitution all over the place. Well, there we go. See, look impedes the state's legislature from conducting elections that the way they deem fit article two, section one, clause two, Congress is trying to say clause four of the same article gives them power, prohibits publishing misinformation, first amendment violation, adding requirements to run for president article two, section one, clause five direct aid to the farmers that are, are socially disadvantaged violation of the equal protection clause and pushes for D.C. to become a state via legislation. Each of those and many more would take a constitutional amendment to to accomplish, but they are going to do it anyways. I don't need to do another segment on this because Liberty or Death just showed you what a joke this bill is. And that was bravo. That was outstanding. Really well done. I mean, it's exactly right. I mean, all of these issues, every single one of those bullet points, you can say, nope, that's uh, that's unconstitutional. Nope, that's unconstitutional. That's never going to stand. And we'll see. I mean, you know, this, this is, this is like a level five DEFCON five 
raise the red flag. This bill is atrocious and uh, it's probably going to pass. <laughs> oh my God, we're in trouble. Sharon Quinney says, okay, this one really gets to me. It will institutionalize erection frogs. I know there's going to be a lot of it. Not only that, it, it is unconstitutional, but do you think the Supremes will have anything to do with it? I'm not holding my breath. I think that the Supremes will, uh, will dismantle this. This is terrible law. This is the type of stuff that the Supreme Court is designed to tackle. Supreme Court is not designed to, uh, to interfere with election uh, gripes. They should have, in this case, because there was a, a very foundational constitutional question that was not answered, specifically about what the role of legislatures are in federal elections and whether or not they can just modify the rules, whether different entities within a state government can modify the rules willy-nilly however they want. And we were talking about that in the context of the Supreme Court changing the election rules in Pennsylvania. Similarly, there was a settlement agreement that took place in Georgia and on and on and on. The list goes on. We don't have to, uh, to get back into any of that. But the Supreme Court, eh, it's, those are like political questions. Those are things that they don't really want to mess with. This is a massive bill. Yes, this is in the same context of an election or of election law, but it's not about a single election. It's not about Trump versus Biden. This is about how the United States for the foreseeable future governs its elections. And so if this does pass, I, you know, I would like I would like to I, I do not want this to pass at all. It's way too dangerous to play around with. So I'm not even going to say I'd like to see it pass just to see what the Supreme Court does. I don't I do not. It's way too dangerous of a bill to play that game. But if it does pass, which it probably will because they control both houses and Joe Biden just acknowledged that he's willing to sign it. Unless you get Manchin, unless you get Cinema, you know, two two people to sort of uh, to you know to, to bail out on this thing, they just need the 51 votes in order to get it to pass. Republicans can filibuster it and they don't have enough to overcome the filibuster, so they can't, you know, they don't have 60 votes in order to invoke cloture on that, but they would they would be able to uh, pass it with a simple majority vote unless the Republicans filibuster it. So maybe it becomes law, maybe it doesn't. I forgot about the filibuster. But if it does pass, I think the Supreme Court eviscerates it. We have Jeremy Matrita says, HR1 was bad enough that a few Democrats voted against it, and of course, all Republicans voted against it. Yeah, it, it is bad. I mean, it's 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 awfully bad, but it passed the House. We'll see where it, where it goes in the Senate. Liberty or Death says, says mandatory early voting votes accepted 10 days later. Why have an election day? We already we are already on an election months after the last one. Let's do election year. It's a good point, Liberty. Why would they want to do that? What is the strategic benefit there? Well, they're pretty damn good at mobilizing people to vote or just, or just uh, accumulating ballots. What a mess. Jeremy Matrita says, if this bill is signed into law, the next election will have more votes than people that live in the country. The next step will be to buy up all the printing presses in the country. Yeah, invest in printing presses. Invest in uh, in a mail-in ballot company, whatever that looks like, because if this thing passes, their stock's going to go up. We got Anki Wo says, Robert, why don't they create a national database using blockchain based on social security numbers that is updated in real time? Link to postal moving forwarding requests, health department, birth death certificates, court system for incarceration, etc. So that people cannot vote in more than one state, register on behalf of someone else, etc. Well, Anki Wo, I think it's because they don't want to solve this problem. I think that is really what this comes down to. I think that technologically, yeah, we can we can we can figure this out. I, 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 just, I don't think that it is all that complicated. And the problem uh, the problem is is multi multivariate, I think. I think largely both parties like to manipulate things in their own ways. And they're, they all know how this game is played. They all know that it's just a big, it's just a big voter frog game. And they're trying to out fraud frog one another on a regular basis. So is, are they interested? Do they have an incentive to change the system? Because they, they currently know how to play within the system. So a real solution is not not palatable because then they, they lose their ability to grift off of everybody. They, you know, if they if there's more accountability in our voting system, then there's less gray area. There's less, you know, consultants to be hired. There's less get out the vote organizations. You know, you've got millions of lawyers on both sides of the aisle just, you know, crashing in there. If it was as simple as we just go like this and just say, hey, voted, logged in the blockchain that's verifiable, cross-checked in real time. We all know it. You're going to have a lot of people who say, well, that's, uh, that's 
voter suppression. What about people who can't get on a phone? Joe Biden said that apparently minorities living in rural areas, they have a difficult time getting on the internet. So we got to get them on the internet so they can go get the vaccine. He said that in a town hall at CNN. So maybe those people, according to Joe Biden, they can't get on the internet. So maybe they can't use blockchain. And if you want to mandate that, well, you're just being racist against the poor people who cannot get on the internet, according to Joe Biden. I didn't say that. But I don't think they really want a solution here is my point. We have Sharon Quinney says, hey, that online voting thing would open up a great opportunity for some creative voting. Will be interesting to see what happens when you have 200 billion Dem votes to three Republicans <laughs> or vice versa when there are only what, like 400 million people in the country. Yeah, I mean, I think both sides are just going to, you know, out uh, erection frog each other. They're going to just go go hog wild with this stuff. We have Ma Fox says, I have to vehemently agree with the idea that campaign funds should be allowed for personal use. Vehemently. Dirty money in politics is already awful. This will just make it worse. Yeah, that, that is like hysterical. That It's disgusting, but it's hysterically disgusting. It, it's just so, so in our faces. Okay, we already know that they take all those campaign funds. They get out there and they run for office. We're going to go fight, man. We're going to fight for the end of the earth. We're losing our country. Everything's failing. I need a million dollars. And, you know, just raising money. Both, everybody does it. You know how many text messages I got this last election? Begging, begging, screaming for money. Hey, Robert, you know, this is so-and-so with this campaign. It was obnoxious. And what about the people who just lose? You just run, lose. Hey, I promise I'm going to go do all this stuff. Raise a couple million bucks retire into the sunset. Just take all that, all that money for daycare, you know, for daycare and trips and all of that other stuff. Oh my gosh. What a, what, what a disaster. Nadar Blasir says, weird how requiring ID and preventing felons from voting is suppression when it comes to voting. But when it comes to second amendment rights, it magically becomes a precautionary step to prevent bad actors from getting firearms. Their only standard is double standards. Yeah. And it's because it serves them. You just have to look at all of this stuff through the lens. Anytime now you hear a politician saying, we care about grandma not getting COVID. Okay, we care about her. We care about the environment. We care about saving the planet. All right, well, why aren't you doing anything about China or India that are polluting it like a million times anything the U.S. is doing? Any, any interest in that? Well, yes, but not yet. We got to change our light bulbs here, right? It's all about, it's all political posturing. The Capitol Hill stuff, insurrection stuff, white supremacy stuff, racial equity stuff. It's all about securing power for the indefinite future, consolidating, consolidating, consolidating. That's why you see these double standards. Second Amendment rights are bad because it's dangerous. But felons should be voting. Okay. Which I agree with, by the way. I think that felons, if, if they've completed their time and they restore their rights, they should be able to vote. Chris Wiseman says, beyond the constitutional issues raised by liberty or death, I think there's also 14th Amendment issues as it directs registration and ballots set to individuals and persons as opposed to citizens. Oh, that's an interesting point. Yeah, that's an interesting point there. This goes back to the problem with the motor vehicle laws where the DMVs issued licenses to non-citizens, felons, minors, and automatically added them to voter rolls. And the DMV is now the de facto voter registration agency. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a good point. I think that, you know, 600 and 746 pages, this thing is going to get shredded in the courts, just shredded. But it's a good point, Chris. And it, it's, it's almost, it's almost funny how just in the face it is which it makes sense. I mean, they're telling, they are telling the country what they want to do. They even published it in time, said, hey, we, we frogged this entire thing. <laughs> You're welcome, America. Well, we had to do it because there was an evil, you know, Nazi dictator in there that we got to, that we had to get rid of. Robert, this comes from I Onion. Last question on this segment says, Robert, but the DIMS, the DIMS, want to verify signatures with a microscope for the Newsom recall thoughts. Well, it's again, it's the double standard that I think Jeremy was talking about right? <laughs> we want to check signatures if it's our candidate that's going to get thrown out of office. We're going to check them hard because it's our candidate. But if it's Trump, then no, we don't check any. We, we checked it. Hey, we did multiple audits, jerks. No court anywhere. Everything is baseless. Anybody who challenges this is undermining American democracy. Okay. <laughs> 